Hello and welcome to this edition on Career Pathway Exploration. My name is Sahana Prasad and I am currently a senior at Northland High School. In this ongoing series, we will be talking with community members in a variety of careers about how they arrived at their respective careers and what advice they can offer students on how to be successful no matter what career path they choose after high school. Joining me today is Mr. Joel Brown. Hi, Sahana. Hi, how are you? Thank you for coming I, on our show. I am fine, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So let's just start by talking about your career journey. How and why did you decide to do the profession that you're doing now? Um, well, I mean, so everybody knows I am a uh, television news anchor and reporter uh, here in Raleigh, North Carolina. I work for the uh, ABC station here in, here in Raleigh, uh, covering Central Carolina and all the news here. Um, I've been here since 2011. So at this point in my uh, what is going to be a 20-year career at this point in September, uh, I have spent half of it here in Raleigh, which is kind of crazy to say, because uh, my, my first few jobs, I was, um, I don't think I stayed more than, you know, four, four and a half years and would kind of hop and on to the next thing, on to the next thing, what's next, as you're sort of, you know, learning, learning your craft and, and, and learning the field and, and wanting to get on to the next thing, but uh, this place has, has treated me well and uh, learned a lot and moved on and, and moved up a lot. Um, so I've been here for 10 years. Um, just to kind of go back to your, your, your original question, um, I've known what I wanted to do and be a television news reporter, be an anchor man. I think I've, I think I, I, I probably figured it out. It clicked in my head, I don't know, somewhere in eighth grade-ish, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere back at North Penn. Uh, in eighth grade-ish, I, I think it kind of clicked that, you know, I, I enjoy history, I enjoy current events, um, I enjoy reading, I enjoy telling stories, you know, when I say telling stories, I mean using my voice to tell stories <laughs> and, and emoting, um, and I, I said, well, I can put all those things together and, and do this on the news, and, I, and, and there were, there were folks on the news, you know, whether it was watching Channel 6 growing up or, or, or watching, you know, Peter Jennings on, on World News Tonight on ABC. We were an ABC kind of family. Um, I said, I, I, I want to do that. And, uh, and I've been fixated on it ever since. Um, and I, I never let it go. When I, got, when I got to the high school, when I got to North Penn and, and um, uh, I, met, I, met, I met Bob Gilmer and uh, what they were doing at NPTV, and, and I said, "Oh my God, this 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 is this is this is it." I mean, I can scratch that itch right now, and and learn and absorb, and uh, I did as much as I could, volunteered as much as I could, was um, doing those basketball games and football games, and, and 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 North Penn News, and anchoring that, and the news magazine show that we had, what was it called, On Location, and posting that and helping to produce that and learning the cameras, learning audio, learning what, what good camera work looks like, learning what bad camera work looks like, bad audio, good audio editing. And uh, took that to college um, at Howard University in Washington, majored in broadcast journalism. Um, that, 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 that same kind of, of uh, you know, trying to be proactive taking that feeling with me to Washington. And when I say that, I mean, you know, doing as many internships as I could, you know, whether it was CNN or, or, or ABC News or, or some of the local affiliates in the, uh, in the Washington, D.C. area. And um, from that, I graduated in 2001 from college and uh, started sending this tape that I've been building all through college to all these stations all across the country. And um, I got my first job in Tyler, Texas. And that was... The fall of 2001. So that is, that's how it began. <laughs> well, no, it's lovely to hear that. And it's, um, it's awesome to hear that it was, you know, something that started in eighth grade and that North Penn in college was a place to nurture that. So it's, it was lovely to hear about all of that. So can you tell us a little bit more about your title um, and the overview of what you do? I know you touched on this earlier, but if there's any specific insights that um, we could know as the North Penn community, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, I, um, like I said, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an anchor and reporter. So not everybody uh, has that title at my station. Some people are just reporters, meaning um, they're 
sole job is to come in every day and, you know, you, you have to have a, a, a wide knowledge of what's going on in the world and what's going on in our community. And, and reporters come in and they pitch stories to the bosses, to our producers who, who uh, pick what's most important to our viewers and uh, say, yeah, that's a good idea. Go do that story. Um, and then they, they go out and they, they news gather, they go and talk to people, they do interviews, come back with their photographers and, and edit pieces together for whether our new newscasts are four o'clock or five o'clock or five thirty or six o'clock news or 10 o'clock news or 11 o'clock news. And that is their day, putting together these stories um, to report. Uh, I do that, um, uh, but I also anchor. Um, so I have two, so I have two, two separate jobs that, um, you know, are, are, are alike in many ways, but a, a lot different in many ways. Um, so yeah, on the reporting side, I do come in at 2.30 every day in the afternoon. We have a 2.45 uh, editorial meeting where we pitch stories, which I was just talking about. So I, I, I come in with all those kinds of ideas. I, I start, when I get up in the morning, I don't go to work till 2.30, but many days it's before work, I'm, you know, calling people, uh, checking out emails, checking out texts from people that say, hey, this is going on or that is going on. And then before, before I get to work, it's my job to kind of bet those stories and see what's real, what's not, what's important, what's not important. Um, so I can go in and pitch ideas for stories for that night. So I do that every day. Um, but then also, as soon as that edit editorial meeting is, is over and, and hopefully it'll, it'll end with, yeah, Joel, that sounds like a good idea. Turn that story for 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Okay, great. Thank you. Meeting over. Now my immediate attention turns to, I have to anchor my newscast. I have an hour long newscast at four o'clock, four at five, and then I come back on at 5.30. I do a half hour at 5.30. I anchor that from 5.30 to six. So that's a totally different job. And it's, it's working with the producers who, are, who have been busy all day writing scripts. Um, so I had to go into those scripts and, and massage them and rewrite things and make it sound like me, look for mistakes. I don't want to, you know, yes, I'll be reading from a teleprompter, but I, I, I need to know what the, what the copy is. I want to be comfortable with it. I want to seem like a master of it. I don't want it to seem like I'm reading. I want it to seem like I know. Um, so I, you know, I spend that time working on the shows, working on anchoring the shows. Um, and then once that is done at six o'clock, I take that anchor hat off and then I go out and report this story. Um, that I, you know, that hopefully the idea was pitched and proved back in my 245 editorial meeting. So two different jobs, but I, I, I do love it. I love both of them. I love anchoring. Um, and I also love reporting. I still love getting out of the building every day, going out, never knowing what I'm going to be doing from day to day and meeting new people and telling new stories. I mean, just straight up telling stories is, 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 is still a cool thing to me that still kind of um, gets me excited. You know, when I, when I do it well, I don't always do it well, <laughs> um, but Hopefully I do it, I do it well more often than not. And uh, when it's good, I still get that little thrill at the end of that. Like, Look, wow, you know, I started the day with nothing and we ended with a great piece and, and hopefully shined a light on something somebody wasn't thinking about earlier today and, and, um, and, and it was told well. It still kind of excites me, it gives me a little thrill. Awesome, that's lovely to hear. Um, so how do you navigate any challenges that arise in your day-to-day -day job, whether it be, you know, something small or something more crucial? Hmm. I think when, well, there's challenges every day, especially with this, with this kind of a job. Um, I think one of the most obvious challenges is, you know, people aren't always available to talk to me when I want to talk to them because they are real people living very real lives and they're, they're not just sitting at home waiting for Joel Brown from ABC 11 to call them uh, to talk um, on a story. So that's, a, that's an immediate challenge. When I've, I've, I've promised a story, I've pitched a story, they, the bosses say, yes, good job, go get it. Sounds good, go get it. And then Somebody will call me and cancel. Somebody will say, no, you know what? I thought about it. I don't want to do this anymore. It makes me nervous. No, I'm going to get fired if I talk to you, Joel. I can't do this. And me having to quickly uh, figure a way around that while I'm up against a deadline. You know, mm -hmm. deadlines are huge. Are another huge challenge on top of an already tough challenge. Um, you know, when I go out and do a story, whether, you know, when I hit the ground at six o'clock to turn a story for 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock, it leaves a very small window to, mm -hmm. uh, to get it done. When I say get it done, get out, interview them, get back, log that, log everything they said 
pick out the best fights and write it. You know, I still want to take time and focus and try to build a story in my head and, 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 and tell it well. And that's all that stuff takes time. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think getting around some of the biggest challenges is, is time management. That's something, you know, that I've, you know, have worked on on this last 20 years and managing my time and, and, and being more efficient, managing other people. You know, I, I, I can't always do everything I, 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 I want to do, but um, I, I've gotten better at delegating and, and, and thinking around it, using the technology. Technology has helped. One thing the pandemic has certainly um, helped with it. All these, all these Zooms I'm doing, I, you know, it, it <laughs> obviously it comes in handy I mean, um, for, for, for interviews when I, you know, you know what, I don't have to drive from Raleigh to Chapel Hill uh, to get this person, which isn't, I'd love to have, but isn't crucial. I can just Zoom them. And then maybe we can get one person in person and then put it all together. So, you know, that challenge is probably the biggest challenge is, is time, you know, more than anything, even with people canceling and everything like that. It, it, that just, it, that's par for the course. It, it goes along with the business, but managing my time um, is, is probably the biggest um, kind of umbrella challenge. It's, it hovers over everything. <laughs> Yeah, no, it definitely does. And while totally on a different scale, I think a lot of high schoolers can face that challenge of time management day in and day out. So exactly. Yeah. So I, pay, I mean, pay attention, work it out now, and then you'll be better equipped. <laughs> absolutely. When you absolutely. Get the adulting than me. <laughs> so you already mentioned this before, but um, what do you enjoy mo- most? So like that thrill you mentioned before that you get at the end of the day, what does that feel like? Is there anything else that excites you about this job? Yeah, like I said, I mean, I, I do, I do still get a kick out of telling good stories um, and, and it all working out because you know, like I, like I said, with all the different challenges and stuff. I mean, sometimes you, you win. Sometimes I win, and something will work out. I mean, just last, just last week, I was doing, a, I was doing a story. Um, I think it was last week. Last week, uh, President Biden announced um, his plan to fully withdraw American troops from Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, you know, it's a, it's a news event, but then, you know, we're a local news station. So how can I make that uh, relevant to our, our, our viewers? We, we, we have a big military audience because we're, um, part of our viewing area is Fayetteville, which is home to Fort Bragg, which is one of the largest, uh, military base in the country, really in, in, in the world. So, you know, military is a part of what we do. Um, in fact, Fort Bragg is such a big deal that when I first got here in 2011, they sent me to Afghanistan to be embedded with uh, some 82nd Airborne uh, troops. And 82nd Airborne is based at Fort Bragg. So these are our local troops. I went to, I went with them to Afghanistan to talk about uh, that stage uh, in the war. Okay, so last week, President Biden makes this announcement about the withdrawal. I'm thinking, I know there's a way to kind of localize this. The station had been having a hard time hooking up with local veterans for, for whatever reason. Um, but then I thought, well, you know, I was there in 2011. How can I figure out a way to kind of tie that in, that trip that I took 10 years ago that you know, probably most people have forgotten I was even there. Um, and I just took a risk. I, I, I went back to one of my stories that I turned in, in Afghanistan to a, a guy who, um, when I was there, he was, um, he had just survived a, a IED blast mm-hmm. um, and it actually saved a couple of soldiers during the blast. So when I was there, he was um, being, you know, given a special medal or a valor, uh, something like that. Anyway, I, I found his name and then I, and I, did a, I didn't have a number for him. I hadn't talked to him since we were in Kandahar. Um, but I, you know, I just did a little bit of research and, and, and I, I found an article that his hometown paper in Michigan had written about him based on seeing our story 10 years ago. They said, hey, one of our local Harford, Michigan uh, 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 troops was just uh, spotlighted in an uh, ABC North Carolina story, blah, blah, blah. This was back in 2011. So anyway, it named his mother in the article. So they quoted his mother, said, oh, I'm so proud to see my son. And I didn't know about this news story. It was in North Carolina. It was far away. Anyway, I looked up his mother, found a number for his mother. Uh, that number had changed, but it went to his sister's phone. His sister calls me back and says, uh, uh, yes, yes, Mr. Brown, I just got your message. We all remember this story you did with, with Thomas 10 years ago. Uh, let me give you Thomas's number. I've already called him. He says it'll be fine. He'd love to talk to you. Long story short, 10 years later, last week on this day that we have this, you know, 
big national news story. I'm able to localize it by saying, hey, remember that time I went to Afghanistan 10 years ago? I reconnected with one of the soldiers I met there and we had a conversation about President Biden's announcement today. Um, so I say all that to say, sometimes I win. Sometimes it works out after all the, 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 the challenges that, that life and time uh, presents. It just worked out and we were telling a nice story and we felt connected to it. It, it had a local connection. Um, and, 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 and the guy was really, he said a lot of things, um, that were important to say on a day like, on a day like that, that, you know, yes, maybe it's time to, 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 to pull out of this country where we've been for 20 years. Uh, um, but also we need to be thinking about the mental health toll on a lot of these soldiers, a lot of it. I, I, he, he said, he said one thing that really stuck with me, he said, look, I've lost more friends and colleagues since I've come home. You know whether it's you know the the, the whether to, to to suicide or risky behavior. You know he's talking serious things, which you know as a journalist you always want to push forward. What's the next thing? He said it. He said it, and I and I and and, and it was it was a good story, um, and I'm glad we were able to tell it. And we wouldn't be able to tell it if things just hadn't you know worked out like that. And that was nice because they don't always work out. <laughs> yeah. No, that was I, I mean hearing it itself like I obviously have not read the article but I I mean I'm very interested to hear about and yeah. hear about this and I think it's really nice to hear how you were able to localize the story to you know the community that you're serving and I think that's so important in this day and age to keep uh, be mindful of who you're catering to right. so I think it's really lovely to know that you can do that in you know a field like journalism for students who may be interested in or may be focused on that aspect. Right. And just a few more, you know, couple questions for you, but for students who are in North Penn, who are interested in journalism, interested in doing what you're doing, um, what should they be doing right now to prepare and what advice do you have for them? Uh, first thing that comes to mind is, is, is right. Right, 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 right. I mean, whatever kind of journalism you want to practice, whether it's, whether it's print or whether it's TV or you know, whether it's, podcasting or, or, or something else on, on the web, your writing is more important than anything. I mean, I, I do TV and, 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 you know, I think to a certain degree, you know, I, I've always kind of been a ham, so kind of comfortable in front of the camera and that a lot. So a lot of that was kind of raw and innate, but certainly needed to be shaped <laughs> into, into something more professional. Um, but I don't know if it was the most important thing. I think that's, that's good to have. And I, and I, and you know, or you will be told whether or not you have it. Um, but what is harder was much harder and, and something I, I still work on and something I, I, I was thinking about when I was your age too, was, um, was writing and making it crisper, writing it shorter, writing, um, knowing how to weave a story, whether it's long form or short form. Mm -hmm. uh, writing for television is different than writing, writing for print, and and now you know writing for for social and whatever blog posting or you know whatever you may whatever form of media you may be doing, mm -hmm. um, and the only way to do that is just to force yourself to write as much as as much as you can, and 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 that's you know not even writing news, but if you're going home and and you know sitting in your room and and, and writing a journal before you go to bed, just writing and putting words on paper. Um, I think is the most important thing you can yeah. do because I, it, it's, it's, you're always going to be up against a deadline and not being afraid of that deadline, knowing that you are capable of, you know what, I'm going to pick up this keyboard or whatever. And I'm just, I, I can write. I know I can write because I write all the time. It's comfortable. And the words come to me. Um, the only way to get to that point is by forcing yourself to do it every day, not being, not being afraid of it. Um, what, 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 what advice, right? Is that where we're at? Yes, that's where we're at. Mm. Keep asking me questions. I'll come back with the other stuff. All right. Okay. So the other question I had is, again, you touched on this before about the opportunities that North Penn offers specifically for journalism, but um, maybe in a different sense, whether it be with writing or maybe communication um, how did North Penn prepare you for um, the career you have now? Mm, I, I think the biggest thing is just, you don't realize how, how um, you know, especially at the time, 
how special, it, you know, the, the, the facilities that we had, uh, facilities that we have, um, mm-hmm. they only got better and, and <laughs> I'm, I'm jealous. Uh, I get more jealous every year about all the stuff that, that is available um, to kids. But even, you know, in, in the 90s, when, 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 when uh, the program was just at its infancy, um, it was pretty amazing to be able to have that kind of hands-on training and not just watch adults do it, but we were, it, it, it wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to get on television if we, these children, did not <laughs> take it down there and, 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 and plug it in and, 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 and be on television. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, you know, th- the things I was able to learn, to fail at, mm-hmm. to um, succeed at, um, you know, in, in, in three years at North Penn, um, it just from the, from basketball games to football games and knowing what I was good at, I'm glad I didn't have to. I'm glad I, I I'm glad I was able to do that while I was in tenth grade. You know, yeah. rather than figure it out at 22 or 23 or 24. You know what I mean? I felt like I, I I've been down that road. I I I know what I'm good at. I know what uh, I know what I'm bad at. And by the time I got to college and post college, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew, and, and I didn't, I didn't need to scratch all these different issues. I did that in in high school. Um, I think that that's probably the biggest takeaway of what MPTV did for me. Yeah, and yeah, I would emphasize that for I think every North Penn, you know, high school student is, is go, goes into the high school knowing that there's so many different opportunities and so many things to explore and. And I mean, we're seeing the result of it. Like you were able to do that at North Penn and you're doing very well for yourself and you're in a very successful position. We're grateful to have you on our show to give uh, that insight to our seniors and juniors and sophomores and everyone. So thank you so much for that. So one more question that we had is you mentioned that you attended Howard University, if I'm correct, Mm -hmm. in in DC. Um, Give us a little bit more insight. Like what was your college experience like? How did you, how were you able to expand on the opportunities that North Penn gave you um, and the importance of networking? Like you had uh, multiple internships you mentioned while you were at college. So um, just give us some insight into, you know, the importance of networking and your college experience. Yeah, I, I mean, going to school in DC was 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 big for me. I think that was probably the the well, I wanted to go to an HBCU, and 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 Howard was was a place that I respected, and I and I enjoyed my college visit. Um, I think number number one factor driving it was the fact that it was in Washington DC. It was in the nation's capital, and I knew what my major was, obviously. Um, and uh, I thought being in the nation's capital uh, kind of would 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 help. Uh, to a to a large degree, um, and it did. Um, I think I don't think we were supposed to even have internships until maybe our junior year. You know, according according to the according to the syllabus. You know, a, a, broad, a broadcast journalism major. Uh, but I I just I, maybe it, maybe it was all those years in NPTV where I just I I needed to be around it. I needed to be in it, and um, you know I started getting internships my sophomore year. Um, you know, I wasn't getting credit for it, but I, I, I wanted it. I, I needed to be a part of it. Um, so I, I, I did start seeking that stuff out pretty early. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I had some pretty great, in, great internships in each one of them. Um, you know, whether it was at CNN or ABC, um, some, some other smaller uh, cable news outlets and outfits and local TV stations as well. But, um, being the nicest, most helpful intern I could be uh, helped with my networking. Um, cameramen who need help, who don't want to a pest or don't want someone who's annoying, but someone who is willing to just do the work that they don't want to do. I am that, I am that person because I just want to be here uh, and I want to absorb all of this because it's what I want to do. I just want to see and I don't want you to be annoyed when Joel comes around. Um, so that was that's what networking began as, mm-hmm. um, and and you know toward the end of those internships, they because I was helpful uh, for those few months, uh, they were much more willing to help me because what I what I wanted out of the deal was uh, a resume tape, 
and I, I needed a cameraman to go out and shoot stand-ups with me and do fake stories so I could put this on a VHS tape and uh, have have that uh, at the end of my college career. So that was that was one thing. That was that was networking at the at the beginning stages, um, and it all worked out at the end of Howard that I had a, a full resume tape. That was the tape that I was sending out to TV stations across the country, even though I hadn't had a job yet. It was all the stuff that I had done in college. Um, and it was enough to get me a job. Uh, networking another way, all my professors, at least in my major, were people that had at one point or another been in the news business, whether it was print uh, or, or, whether it was te- or whether it was television. And, and some of them are still friends to this, to this day. And then, you know, it, it started in this professor-student relationship but, uh, you know, obviously you have all this stuff in common and they became, uh, you know, just full-fledged mentors to me. And then in now in adulthood, they have become uh, 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 friends. Mm-hmm. One of my broadcast professors, um, Jonathan Decker, who uh, he's my BJ2 professor. I mean, how amazing is this? I graduated in 2001. So I had him probably 2000-ish, probably around Graduate. I'm I'm working at CBS Newspath uh, in late 2000s. I was there from 2007 to 2011. Anyway, I'm at the White House a lot, uh, like you know, every day or whatever. That was kind of like I was a Washington-based reporter, so I'm either Capitol or the White House. Anyway, Jonathan Decker, who has since left Howard, is now working for AP, working for the Associated Press, and he's sitting right next to me in the White House briefing room. My you know, my my old college professor, and we're doing what we do and being journalists together. And it was just kind of so kind of full circle and, and, and cool. Um, you know, and, and, and he's a, he's a part of my network, you know? Um, so, and, and the network also is collegial. Um, every station I've worked at, whether it was NBC 56 in Tyler, Texas, or, or WSVN in Miami, CBS, and now ABC 11 here in Raleigh all those people, all those bosses, all those producers, all those fellow reporters, and all those photographers and editors, probably more important than anything, are my, net, my network. And, um, you know, nurturing, nurturing those, those, those friendships uh, and, and that network is, 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 is what fuels me and it really is, um, I, I'm not gonna worry. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't know what the next day is 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 going to bring, or the next job. If there is a next job, will I need a next job? But uh, the network is strong because it's 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 built on on those people and those relationships. So I wouldn't take anything for granted as you whatever career path you're choosing. That's that's the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think we've all learned the value of having people in our lives. And I think it's definitely something that, you know, a lot of seniors, especially going into college or need to think about as they, you know, transition to, you know, professional life and away from the student life. Any other advice, any other words of wisdom for our North Penn students? Any other words of advice? Oh, I wish I had something. I wish I had something uh, really deep that was going to, that was going to change, change your life, Sahana, change the world. <laughs> but, uh, you, you, you seem to have it figured out. Well, keep your, keep your, 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 your heads screwed on straight. I know the last year and a half, the last two years has been, uh, um, has been a little crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are doing this interview from what looks like your, your, your bedroom right now. Yeah. But, uh, you are still doing it. And I think it shows, um, I think it's, I don't know. It speaks to the resiliency of uh, of you and all of your peers, and uh, and that you're going to school with, and really of the generation of your generation. You know what I mean? I I I can't imagine doing school like this um, for the last year year and a half. I mean, actually physically going to that school every day was in my mind was was crazy and tough. And (laughs) but you've been doing it in a in a total different way. So I think. Look, resiliency is something that um, I've my own my own resilience has been tested uh, mm-hmm. over this twenty year career, um, and uh, I I think you know growing up in Lansdale and going to the school and having the opportunities that I had uh, came with a certain amount of privilege, and uh, I didn't always um, uh, respect that or or, or I don't know. 
I didn't know it until I was uh, a little older and adulthood kind of uh, reveals like, oh yeah, you haven't had it so tough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not everything's easy, obviously, but uh, I, I, I certainly have to recognize the privilege that, it, that I have had in my life. And then when tough times hit, it made it tougher for me to take um, because things had relative, again, all of it's relative, had come relatively easy to me. Um, so when I, I did come against hard challenges, challenges in career, challenges in life, um, it took me it took me a little more to kind of push through it and get through it and think about what's next. But um, so I, anyway, I'm, I'm saying all this to say resiliency will be tested and it's an important attribute to adulthood and to life and the fact that uh, y'all, you and uh, the rest of the, the folks you're going to school with are have gone through this will make you better and um, just hold on to that. Well, on the behalf of all North Penn students, I say thank you for that. I think, you know, it's definitely nice to hear that uh, given the type of school year we've been having. Mm -hmm. And we thank you so much for joining us today. And we appreciate your time to offer career advice to the students in North Penn. Thanks, Ahana. Of course. You can watch all our episodes of the Career Pathway Exploration Series on the North Penn Television YouTube channel at youtube.com slash NPTV. I'm Sahana Prasad. Thank you for watching with us today, and we'll see you next time on Career Pathway Explorations. Mm -hmm.